Q&A, let's answer some questions. The Q is in the Q. Let's, uh, first one here from Muttley, hashtag Clem out. I don't know who Clem is, but get them out. Yeah, get them out. Uh, what is your ultimate what if in <sighs> wrestling? Theirs uh, would be what would have happened if the ECW WCW Alliance had won the winner takes all match uh -huh. at Survivor Series 2001. What's your biggest what if? Well, that, that one's if? never that one's never happening. Yeah. Uh, but yes, it would be a very interesting what if. I was to tossing and turning on this. I was trying to think about it. It's a great question, you know. And I was thinking about like what if Punk had never stormed out, or what if The Rock had never gone Hollywood. But I think I have to go for a really. I mean, I think I know what the answer is, but I'm gonna go for it anyway. What if that bloke hadn't tweeted Dave Meltzer? What if that bloke <laughs> hadn't said to Dave Meltzer, reckon uh, Ring of Honor could sell out 10,000 seats? Like, that's the catalyst at the end of the day yeah. for AEW. I think, reading into it a little bit, I think Cody and the boys were getting the ball rolling somewhat already, but if that tweet isn't the catalyst for the original All In, of course, and then that being like, Wait a second. Yeah. Is there room for another company here? And then obviously the birth of AEW. I mean, what does WWE look like, right? Yeah, now? absolutely. Absolutely. It's nowhere near as good, in my opinion, because I think not. the pressure has helped them. Other things, obviously, has been an influential factor on it, too. But yeah, I think we've always said competitions great for wrestling companies. Yeah, absolutely. And like, I think the AEW one is particularly interesting because there's like 10 perfect things that happened that will never happen again, no. that if one of them didn't happen, no company. That That's probably the biggest one, the yeah. 10,000 one, for sure. Yeah, the uh, yeah. at the end of the day, All In could have been sensational, but if Tony Khan hadn't been there with all the money to be like, let's make this thing yeah. happen, yeah. it wouldn't be to the level that they are right now. No, absolutely. So the modern landscape, completely different. I'm glad you went for a modern one, because I've gone for an old full game. Oh, one. good. Uh, what if, I mean, this is completely transformational. What if Scott Hall and Kevin Nash don't jump ship? What if the Outsiders don't jump ship, start the NWO of Hulk Hogan, and completely revolutionize the yeah. face of American wrestling in the 1990s? Obviously, WCW no longer exists anymore, yeah. right? Um, but, uh, and this was something that helped them uh, prolong their lifespan for sure, until everything started going out of yeah, control. Yeah, the with, beginning and the beginning of the end. Yeah, with certain egos and certain salaries and certain bookers. Um, but it's obviously one of the biggest moments in pro wrestling history. It's something that everyone knows. Uh, and a hugely transformational thing in terms of big names just jumping back yeah. and forth. Obviously, you had things like Lex Luger on the first episode of Nitro uh, and so forth. But this uh, it started the most iconic and probably the most ripped off wrestling stable of all time yeah. in the NWO. So it's almost impossible to think what wrestling would look like without that. Um, I imagine WCW would have gone out of business quicker. Uh, we'd have had a longer monopoly period, uh, and that might have created a market where something like AEW couldn't have happened. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a big one. Yeah, you're right. Yours is such a sort of seismic moment because it's it's not just those two turning up in WCW. It's them jumping to the other company. Yeah. It's that being the catalyst, like you say, for a Hulk Hogan heel turn. Would that have ever mm -hmm. happened? Probably, but it would have been as good. Give him a new lease of life. <laughs> Sincerely yeah. doubt yeah. it. Again, what would WWF have done? Because yeah. at the end of the day. They were a bit trash um, in amongst all this, and then they went, oh, they're doing this like attitude y yeah. stuff, let's do that. It's it's a huge moment and a, and a, a very much a sliding doors moment in wrestling. Isn't Hulk it? Hogan's a really interesting one as well because he's re reinvented himself so many times. Like it kind of flies under the radar how many times Hulk Hogan has kind of reinvented himself mm. in the era. Uh, AWA moves into WWE, becomes the biggest star in the planet, fades out. People get a bit sick of him. Yokozuna, all of that stuff. Mm. Caesar's Palace, uh, jump ship to WCW isn't you know quite taking as a babyface in the same way that he used to. Turns heel, has that whole era, goes back to WWE, turns babyface again and then uh, the biggest reinvention ever for Hulk Hogan in 2015 he reinvented himself as a racist so <laughs> it's quite the transformation this I, I thought you were going to keep going there I, I thought you were going to say you know after all that obviously became a talent scout he discovered Kevin Steen um, he invented time travel prior to that um, you know in the early early days Elvis was of course a big fan of his partying <laughs> with John Belushi let's not forget that um, and he, of course it could all change if he'd been a what was he a guitarist in Metallica a uh, bass player in Metallica it, yeah. brother uh, could, I watched could all been so different. I watched some kind of monster, he was all over it. <laughs>
Good stuff. That's a quite work. nice way of describing him now, some kind of monster. Uh, right, our, my first question today comes from Jimmy J, who says, is the Ooh. Triple H honeymoon Ooh. phase over? He vowed to do away with gimmick matches just to do them, and here we are at War Games annually. Yeah, I think it's a kind of thing where if you were to sit down and list the promises that wrestling promoters have made over time, uh, like, they break 100% of yes. them. It's just kind of what happens. Uh, promises uh, it kind of exist uh, as a temporary thing to get people hyped initially, uh, and then everyone Everyone goes back on the word. Everyone yes. does. Uh, some more so than others. Um, but I think it is uh, right to actually call it out and go, hey, this idealistic version didn't end up happening. And to pick apart maybe why it mm -hmm. didn't happen. I think that's a more interesting conversation than going, you suck now! Um, but with Triple H, yeah, I mean, there's definitely some things to criticize for sure. I think that because the big picture stuff is so solid, so consistent, yeah. and hits so well, the bloodline, all the involved characters in that, Cody Rhodes at the moment, Kevin Owens at the moment, and Rand, uh, I almost said Randy Rhodes, <laughs> rest in power, uh, Randy Orton, like there's, there's, cause all the big picture kind of uh, blockbuster drama stuff hits so well. Sometimes it does mask other problems. Mm -hmm. um, I do think that there's a real problem with the main Raw Women's title program being based around a man all year. I think that's an issue. Um, I think that the tag scene, what's happened to that over the past two years and the diminishing of certain teams like the Street Profits yeah. is an issue. Um, maybe it's on the upswing now. Yeah. I, I think that this week, last week's SmackDown was particularly positive in that regard. Indeed. And we got the Motor State Machine Guns, but there are certain criticisms that maybe um, maybe don't go as uh, loudly voiced uh, because the bloodline is so strong. I think I think the honeymoon phase is over, but I'm not saying it's necessarily you know that means that everything's going to go bad very soon. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm with you. I, th I think you know Triple H running this has been absolutely sensational for the for the past few years, considering other. Choppy waters he's had to navigate, let's say. Um, but now, I mean, it, I don't think the honeymoon phase is over in terms of uh, money. No. Uh, because they <laughs> cannot help just printing it right now. Obviously, we've got the Netflix deal coming in. Uh, you, you know, the TKO Endeavor merger thing is just, everyone seems to be very happy with that, obviously. They are announcing two night shows, stadium shows, world tours, like, Business is incredible um, yeah. right now for WWE, but there are things to criticize. I completely agree. I think sometimes I get blinded by like, look how great things are with Cody Rhodes and Gunther and people like that. And you think, well, uh, that wasn't great actually. And what are we doing here? And yeah. so I, I think there is, there is things to criticize, but I think it's a lot better than what it could have been. Uh, God, and, yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, another what if moment. What if Triple H hadn't taken over? What the hell would it look like oh, right now? It. This is it. What kind of uh, UFC brained maniac would they have uh, running the show right now? Shane McMahon. Yeah, yeah. He is a UFC brain maniac because he thinks he's the hardest man alive. And he, he was going to. I'm really glad they didn't buy it. Real glad. Yeah. Yeah, that absolutely. would have looked very different. That would have been someone else. UFC Brain Maniac's not a complete insult, by the way. I like MMA, but yeah. uh, but Dana White is an uh, interesting character. Mm -hmm. uh, slapped, slapped his wife in public, lest we forget. Yep. Uh, right, next question today comes from J-A-C-K, who would like to know, rank these wrestlers in order of who will be WWE Champion or World Champion first. Austin Theory, Braun Breaker, Dominic Mysterio, Ilya Dragunov, Julius Creed. Five of them. Oh, so we got the big real five. Real promising some names on there. The big five, they call them. When I first glanced at this tweet, I will be honest, Braun Breaker's name leapt out at me, but I think I'm going to be sensible here. I think Braun Breaker is going to be world champion without question, but I think it's going to be maybe a longer run until that happens. Yeah. I think they're going to focus on the, the IC title, the mid-card title for him for the time being, and then slowly build him up, you know, maybe even take that title off him and have him fight with even higher up stars, but and not quite make it. I think Dragunov, Dragunov's number one for me. Nice. I know he's nice. obviously injured and get well soon to him, but he's someone who, yeah, you can tell they, I mean, this regime does, the old one wouldn't have, really have big plans for him. I think maybe he would have been the one to dethrone Gunther had this injury not happened, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, there's, a, there's a version of events where that happens. So I'll put Dragunov first, if I'm ranking them. Yeah. Bron Breaker second. Uh, now, now you come into uh, hope or expectation. Yeah. Because I hope Julius Creed becomes world yeah. champion. Um, I don't see that happening for a good few years yet, though. Uh, I think uh, people who are in the know, Michael Sidgwick in particular, have highlighted that Julius Creed um, has the potential to be a, a mega star. That guy can do a power bomb and an ankle lock at the same time. Yeah. Why not give him the belt now? But I would not rule out Dominic Mysterio becoming a world champion before him. Uh, Austin Theory, I think, 
Again, old regime, probably higher up on this list. Yeah. New one, I'm not too sure, but I'm intrigued to see if they do do this babyface turn with him, how that takes. Yeah, yeah, it'll be a, a new chance for him. He's definitely um, burned out a lot mm. over the past couple of years. Uh, so I, I'll go in. He's bottom of my list, despite the fact he had a briefcase to guarantee a world title shot. They used the US title. <laughs> yeah. Dumbass. Good stuff. Uh, I will start with Dominic Mysterio and put him at number five. Oh. Um, I think he's, I think he's, I, He's I a funny think, challenger for a world title, isn't he? he? What? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think that with the utmost, utmost respect, uh, Austin Fury needs a giant kick up the ass. Yeah. I think his performances are nowhere near even what they were in NXT. His body's bad as well. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean... Do a sale. He hasn't even got a nice <laughs> smile. What's going on there? <laughs> Small t-shirt guy. Uh, no. Um, I, I think he needs something to re-energize him. I've got him at the bottom of my list for that reason. Yeah. Uh, second bottom, same as you, Julius Creed. I think that he has uh, main eventer written all over him. I just think that journey is going to be a little longer. Uh, he's still really young. He's only been doing this a couple of years. There's plenty of time with, with Julius. Uh, slightly different, I've got Dragunov at number three. Okay. Primarily because he's injured and I think there's a lot of stuff they want to do with him before he yeah. gets to that point. Um, I do want to see the Gunfer match on the main roster. We'll try him with a mid-card title yeah. maybe first. Yeah, yeah, definitely. A little work, work rate. Mid-card reign, yeah. that'd be sick. Number two, I've got Dominic Mysterio. Who's better? Who would be better at cashing in a Money in the Bank briefcase and being a dick? Like, you know, there's no one on the roster. He'd be perfect at that. Or even like a little Miz-style title reign like a couple of years ago where he wins it, holds it for a day and then loses it to someone cool. Yeah. I'm up for that. Uh, and then at number one, I've got Braun Breaker because he is <laughs> incredible. <laughs> I love him. Uh, the only thing that's bad about Braun Breaker is the entrance music. Everything else rocks. Yeah. So, there you go. And you're distracted by that because sometimes he brings out a chair chainsaw and cuts through a giant X when he was down in NXT. This is it, this is it. The Kick the letters out of the way. The soundtrack doesn't matter if he's hacking stuff up, <laughs> brother. Uh, Cole gives us our next question. If you could choose a wrestler, past, present, or both, uh, to be able to retire like Sting did with a win instead of the traditional on their back way, who do you think deserves it the most? Sami Zayn. Oh, Sami like Zayn. Beloved figure. Everybody adores Sami Zayn. Have you ever met a Sami Zayn hater? Like once no. in your life, have you or have you even met someone who's gone? I just don't get Sami Zayn. You know, I haven't figured it out. I think he's perfect for that role for that reason. Mm. Now he he has got that kind of uh, gene in him where he will gladly, seemingly gladly put anyone over. Um, and he like like you know the thing about Brian Danielson having to be bullied into winning the AEW title. Uh, it might be the same for Sami in his retirement. But I think um, he's got such a unique connection with people's hearts, souls, and minds. Yeah. That I think he'd be perfect for it. Just win on your way out, like yeah, good. Yeah, there's not many ones that I think I'd go back and change. I think, I think a lot of them wouldn't want to win. To be perfect, unless yeah. it's very much a, an old school mentality. You go out on your back, isn't yeah. it? And yeah, I don't think there's many that you'd. I mean, I mean technically, uh, we were doing a, a live stream for our What Cool Dressing podcast YouTube channel one year celebrations. Uh, Shawn Michaels went out with a win, um, so. <laughs> Technically. <laughs> it's Crown Jewel 2018, but it still counts. We all remember, Sean. But yeah. um, I've got two names hitting here in front of me. And they're, they're, one is very much caveated. Depending on who he's facing, Goldberg should go out with a win. <laughs> that should not be against Gunther. If you're yeah. having Goldberg having his retirement match against some lit Dominic Mysterio, some little dweeb, Adolf Ziggler-esque, Ah, you're old, you're crap, you can't do what you used to be able to. Spear, spear, spear! Jackhammer, one, two, three, yeah, cheers, Goldberg. But yeah, not against not against a work. world champion or a real, real prospect. Yeah, like a Braun Breaker. Yes, would, exactly, I that wouldn't do that there. Suck. The other one is just nice, and I could foresee it happening next year, John Cena. Ooh. Like, Ooh. this isn't him beating someone, again, promising on the way out. It is just giving him something as a send-off of, like, one last John Cena win. Cena wins lol. <laughs> That's, the end of it all. That's the best way to do it. The only way that man is going to win on this retirement tour is if he shaves it off, man. This is, oh. It's disgraceful. So it's the penultimate match is hair versus hair and then last match is retirement. There you go. That's what we need. Let's go. Who's he facing here versus here? Cesaro. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. We, we need someone who also, who else could, would you identify that you're foreseeing Mm, stop fighting, brother. I'm not sure. Most people like yeah, a lot of them giving up. Like Baron Corbin was very yeah. aware of that. Yeah, Moxley's finally bit the bullet. Although I will say, I think that John Moxley is a rare guy 
who looks better looked better as a balding man with hair than as a bald guy. I think it suited him a bit more. Yeah. yeah like the little widow's yeah. peak. I think he looked a bit cooler. I know, he's not losing it, but I know it would be great for a hair versus hair match. John Cena versus AJ Styles. Oh my goodness, those luscious locks. Just just the even the mock-up of a bald AJ Styles would be incredible. Oh my goodness. <laughs> he looked like uh, Josh Brown had my favorite one from the gaming team had one of my favorite tweets of the year when he called like AJ Styles a little uh, what was it deep fried guy or something like that <laughs> like made out of jerky something along those lines uh, he would look so weird with no hair yeah <laughs> why not let's go uh, or right Gun or Gunther big old Gunther I don't think it would suit him why not uh, right let's save Hamlet and we can see what he could potentially look yeah like. let's let's pin him down and bully him why not <laughs> uh, don't do that uh, Kindle Stevens Jr. We'd like to know, do you think, we're talking about Netflix here, do you think there will be a streaming problem when they debut in January, or do you think that they will have that issue resolved? Referring, of course, to the uh, very smooth broadcasting experience that was uh, the very serious boxing match this week. Yeah, it's a load of bollocks, wasn't it? Uh, I'll be honest, my experience of it was actually completely fine. Uh, I think I assume it was maybe more in the States, obviously with, it was 120 million or something like that. Yep. I think for that reason, and I think you mentioned it at the time, uh, I think they'll be absolutely fine. I, I have high hopes for lots of people watching WWE on Netflix, and I myself got very giddy last night when I went on Netflix and looked at new and popular or, or upcoming or whatever, and saw the little Raw logo come in in January, all that sort of thing. I don't anticipate it's gonna have such high demand that they're gonna struggle. Look, Netflix is a streaming service they will, if they haven't already off the back of this uh, Tyson Paul, but they'll just get even more. Is it servers that they need? I don't know. I have no I'm idea, bro. guy. No idea. Yeah, like, I don't think 120 million people will be watching <laughs> Raw. Uh, I'd imagine. It would be great if there was. Re like, wrestling would explode if they did. <laughs> Subscribe if you're here. Uh... <laughs> yeah. So the volume, the volume won't be as high, which yeah. is good uh, in a lot of ways. But yeah, like, it seems that every single live streaming platform, the first couple of times, has problems. I remember when uh, AEW's first few streams on Fight and, and, and yeah. Bleacher Report, I remember Fight for the Fall in the first one, they were like, somehow the audio was from a different show, <laughs> and then there were subtitles that had nothing to do with the wrestling yeah. for like five minutes or something, and it was like, what the hell's going on? But I will say, like, we're kind of, this is one of the things where maybe in the first few weeks and months, our British time zone will be a benefit because we'll be watching it on demand. Good point. So, you know, there won't be those same live problems um so i guess for those first few weeks in america it's just too bad and yeah for, for for all the problems that we've had over the years one thing they haven't really suffered with is production like yes that's the thing they <laughs> constantly nail uh, and you've said yourself as well about the the like upgraded version of netflix is netflix is going to make WWE look even better i mean that fight looked incredible when i watched it the next day the 4K quality, like the net, the the network and all these other things are, are they're good quality. Mm. They're good quality, but there's definitely a clear leap up when you mm. get onto that Netflix tech. Uh, I guess it's just 4K versus 1080p, yeah. isn't it? Um, but yeah, it looks looked amazing. I'm yeah. looking forward to wrestling. And really see Tyson's cheeks all in 4K on that one. Oh, uh, why did he do that, man? Why? What was? Why did he do any of it? Why, Money what? is the answer. Yeah, 20 million dollars, baby. Uh, Will's Osprey gives us the next question. Nice. This is a toughie. What is your favorite Jim Johnston WWE theme song of all time? I think Break the Walls Down is hard to top. Mm. I'm intrigued what others think. I mean, like, 90% of them are great, yeah. is the thing. Please just uh, bring a version of him back. Yeah, like, 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 if there's a way we can get, like, Jim Johnston back in the fold, and then uh, for decades and decades, can we clone him? And have, yes. like, a version that steps in over the years. Um, yeah, it, it sucks. It's it's a good question to ask in this era as well because the music is so bland these days. If they someone said, what's your current favorite theme, I'd really struggle. Yeah, Gunther is good. Yeah. Gunther is good. Uh, the, old, the Roman one before they changed it to this current one was good. Mm -hmm. And that's about it. <laughs> that's about it, baby. Uh, but Jim Johnson, I mean, I can't name just one. Like, that's unfair. Yeah. Stone Cold, obviously. Yeah. Obviously. It's just the two note riff. It's perfect. Glass shattering. Uh, personal favorite, the APA. I feel like I mention them every video now, but I like the dun, 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 dun. It's good stuff. Uh, ba, 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 ba. The Brood. Every, everybody picks the Brood for this question. 
Uh, the aesthetics of that as well with the red light and coming up and the blood out, the goblet. Shout out to Gangrel, the legend. Hey. Uh, recovering from surgery as Is well. He's had, soon? I think, a hip and a knee replacement. So best wishes to him. Mm. Uh, but actually, my all time favourite is a bit of a freak one. You ever, I like heard, it. you ever heard the Corporate Ministries theme, brother? Not for a long time. So it's basically a mix of No Chance in Hell, which could be on here as well. Yeah. And uh, one of the Undertaker's old dark evil guy oh, themes. Yeah. It's so good. It's unbelievable. Go and listen to it now if, if it's not in of your head. the modern day version of that. Remember the, that period where WWE would shove two tag teams together and then you go, oh, what's the theme? And they'd go, uh, 30 seconds of one theme and then 30 <laughs> seconds of the other one. There you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Stone Cold, first name I wrote down here, yeah. obviously. Uh, that goes without saying. Degeneration X, really like that. that Oh, and yeah, Triple H's stuff, he was doing good stuff in there. I wrote down, and then was I had to clarify, I wrote down Sexy Boy, but I think that's a Jimmy Hart, uh, I was going to say Joe Johnson. <laughs> Just one of our colleagues, congratulations <laughs> to Joe for being involved in Shawn Michaels' thing. Jim Johnson's sort of... How old is he? Like, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, can I go in, uh, one of these question and answers without mentioning in The Rock? No. Uh, no, you're all, uh, obviously, uh, up there. But I might have to lean towards medal for Kurt Angle. Oh, my, originally for the Patriot, of course. Yes. Legend. Yeah. It just, it's iconic, isn't it? The you suck just took it over the edge as well. Like, yeah. That's a great pick. I wouldn't have even thought of that because there's so many of them. But let us know let us know yours in the comments because there, there is, like you say, so many. And I'll be honest, in, in researching this question, I lost about two hours of my day. Yeah. Uh, I got through, through some of the old themes. And now I've got another one, Corporate Ministry, to go and check out. Uh, Kane. Kane's is good as well. Quite good. There's loads of them. Yeah, back in the day. Right, uh, it's my turn, right? Yes. Yeah, it is. Okay, Roger Kirby has been on uh, asking, Gents! I do not care about TV ratings, but I find the dead AEW crowds have a detrimental impact on the product. What is the solution? Is it as simple as booking smaller venues, maybe a residency like they did for Collision? What do you think? How do they get uh, people to make noise on their shows oh, again? Oh, God, yeah, this is really depressing, isn't it? Um, Sid was talking just the other day on our Dynamite review about how, uh, I think it was last week, they, they were doing some really good stuff in the ring but you almost had to take stars off in terms of rating it because it was just getting no reaction. Yeah. Um, promising signs with this from a, a report I read from Brian Alvarez that apparently do, uh, AEW are looking into moving into smaller venues. I think there was some issue with the set being too yes. big. Hence why they've had, and probably, like you mentioned the last time we talked about this, it's not like they can turn around and go, right, next week, smaller venue. They've got things yeah. booked up months and months and months in advance. But I think they finally acknowledge now, it's probably better to have a cauldron, and I think that's I think that's what's yeah. going to fix it, a cauldron atmosphere where you're selling out a 5,000-seater venue rather than selling 5,000 or 3,000 or whatever seats in a 20,000-seater venue just because that you want the, the big aesthetic there. I'm not sure about a full-time residency going forward. I did like what they did with Collision. I just think um, that was fine for Collision. I don't think that would work for something like Dynamite. I just think, yeah, big book smaller venues, and I think that's the direction they're heading in. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. And they've just announced a bunch of, like, they're doing free shows at the Hammerstein Ballroom yes. in New York, brother, which is my favorite backdrop ever. WWE, uh, run ECW, will you? We'll yeah. show you. <laughs> yeah, guess where we're going, Chief. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that very much. I totally agree. We've been saying this for ages. Uh, I think that the idea that running a smaller bu uh, building makes you look less big time or whatever, I think that's just fragile ego nonsense, yep. personally. Who gives a crap? Who cares if the product if the product is good? Does it matter if the backdrop is three tiers or one? I don't think it does. Um, what matters is the atmosphere. And look, over the years, maybe this isn't so applicable now, but oftentimes over the years when people would go on, on Twitter after a show and go, that crowd was a bit quiet, a lot of people who were there would go, actually, it was very noisy yes. in the building, they just didn't produce it very well. I don't know if that's still the case, but that might we be a potential. We occasionally get that in our, on our reviews. Yeah, people yeah. say, oh, I was in attendance, it was far better, but. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, for me as well, like there, there's definitely some creative things they could tighten up to. Get Austin Gunn uh, back on the front row as well. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you fill the whole building, brother. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm totally in favour of the small buildings, and I'm actually looking forward to seeing what they look and sound like. Mm. Continental Classic starts next week, so you know, like if you're a bit burned out on AEW, I certainly am. Uh, this is a pretty good, pretty good. Fresh beginning, yes. new start kind of thing. So uh, Jack gives us our next question. I'm glad uh, he's asking you this because I'm going to struggle with part of it. <laughs> Rank their peaks, Andy. TNA, Ring of Honor, New Japan, WCW, WWE, AEW. Okay, so 
I like this question. It's one for the freaks, for sure. Uh, I'm gonna do it based not on business or whatever. I'm gonna do it on my taste. Subjectively, I think yeah. that's the best way to the do o- it. It's the only way I know yeah. how. And like what these things meant to me as a fan, all of that stuff. So number six, rock bottom. I'm sorry, TNA, you're right there. We match. Okay, <laughs> there we go. Um, look, peak TNA, I really, really enjoyed. Um, the AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, Christopher Daniels, like uh, Elix Skipper running across the top of the cage, all of that stuff, like it all landed with me, just not to the degree of these other companies. Yeah. What have we got left? WCW, Ring of Honor, New Japan, AW... WWE. And, oh, good, good. I forgot WWE. I will say after that, I'll say AEW, right? Just because it's younger. Okay. Um, I was deeply into it for, like, I loved it. Loved the TV product up until the devil storyline started, brother. <laughs> I still enjoy it today, but, like, it's only been around for a few years. It needs it okay. needs more it needs more time on the stuff. I, I went Ring of Honor next for mine. Okay. Purely because of my complete lack of knowledge, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm sure it was great. I just have no idea about it. That is very fair. Uh, my my Ring of Honor ranking is very different. <laughs> you, you, you watch Ring of Honor. Yeah, yeah, you're, I'm a, I'm a, you're getting back into it, I am you? a robot, brother. Uh, right, I've got a f- four WCW. Okay. Um, so retrospectively, I love watching the BS era of WCW, like the worst years. But for me, like the year I enjoy most from WCW is 1989, because I'm a dark and I'm old. <laughs> uh, there's some really great stuff there, Flair Funk in particular. Um, but again, just didn't quite connect with me like when I went back to rewatch, because I wasn't watching wrestling when I was one year old. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it, you know, it's been a retrospective watch rather than an in the moment watch mm. for what I think is their peak. So it's hard to rank it higher. I went New Japan next. New Japan. Again, just pure me not being clever enough to watch more of it. Looks great. Uh, obviously, just some jaw dropping stuff. I suppose it depends what you're saying, what the peak is. Is it the peak of like the best wrestling? Because obviously, it should be far higher if it's that. I just think around, I've gone peak aura. Yeah. That aura. I like that. I don't know, really know. So I've, I've just put New Japan because, yes, obviously some incredible wrestlers, but I, I wasn't watching enough to, to know enough about it. That is very fair. So it's very much a Fed headed list, mine. Yeah, and that's why. I saw the Fed's at number three. Yeah. Uh, that, so that, that's how it should be ranked. It's hard here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so my number three is actually the Fed. Okay. Um, I think that, look, it's the, I wouldn't be here if I didn't watch Royal Rumble 1992. You know, like, like when I was super into this, this stuff was my life. Like going to school and like talking about the raw results and on a Tuesday, cause you like, you've read them online instead of waiting for Saturday and then videotaping it and watching it at the weekend, all this stuff and like, that kind of, you can't get that back. Going on the bus, uh, school bus, who's Rikishi beat in the main event, brother? Uh, what did The Rock do? Shawn Michaels is back. Oh, no way, that was something someone made up. Uh, <laughs> that's like, that's formative yeah. life experience. And WWE was right there for it. Uh, WCW's third on my list. Again, I didn't watch that when I was younger, when it was around, but I've retrospectively gone back and watched it. And you just you just look at those sweeping shots and you know the, the big, big matches and the, the mega stars they had at the end of the day. Um, again, I'm, it's, it's recency bias, my list, yeah. uh, as I was saying, WCW are number three. Well, I'm an old fogey is the difference uh, in wrestling brain terms. My number two is New Japan. Uh, it saved my fandom in like 2015. The show was back to the Yokohama arena. The match that caught my attention most was Tomohiro Ishii, my favorite wrestler now, versus Kota Ibushi, uh, who, who's had an interesting journey over the years, I think it's fair to say. Mm-hmm. But no, like from like 2015 and probably before that as well, to, uh, I don't know, like 2019, 2020, thereabouts, the New Japan in-ring product completely fried my brain. Um, it rewired everything I knew about wrestling. Uh, I was sitting there watching it going, hold on a minute, what do you mean you don't need segments and, and romance <laughs> angles? Yeah. Where is the car destruction angle? What's going on? Uh, it saved my fandom, it re-energized my love for this business, and uh, it's a shame that it's not quite the same today. Speaking of re-energizing my love of business, AEW's at number two for me. Very nice. Um, I think, you know, it, 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 when it was at its peak, it, it can get back there, I believe, I hope anyway. I thought it was just sensational and, and as we've mentioned on many occasions, the catalyst for the change in the entire wrestling business, basically. Um, and I just remember being, the, the buzz around it all, being there for, for Double or Nothing, for example, in Las Vegas and the excitement that everyone felt around the start of this new company and TV. And I remember that first night and we did a, a live stream watching it, me and Nicholas uh, and, and Adam Cleary and watching the, the two companies go at it and just like, 
it was Jake Hager. People were like, Jesus Christ, Jake Hager's here! Uh, I just thought it was it was great. And then obviously just like the in-ring was, yeah. and still is, just unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Like, I feel a bit harsh putting them down at number five. <laughs> it's purely I'm, because they're only five years I'm, old. I'm only like, doing recency bias. Yeah, so. like... No, no prizes for guessing what's number one on my list, by the way. It's CMLL! Uh, <laughs> my number one then would be Ring of Honor. Uh, again, this completely fried my head uh, when I discovered it. Early 2000s, uh, the company started in 2002, it's probably 2003, 2004 before I heard people on online message boards talking about this Ring of Honor thing. And then I was an EWR player, shout out to all the true freaks, <laughs> all the Adam Ryland heads out there, uh, and, and saw it in there. And I was like, who is this American dragon? Yeah. <laughs> and who is low key and all these guys? and. Uh, it, it kind of became almost a religion for me. Like I what like they used to call them robots back in the day. The the hardcore Ring of Honor fans who were like the Fed, like the modern day version of like uh, Fed Pilled or AEW Freakazoid or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever terms you're using, um, where they would defend every single thing to the hilt and uh, just living through that, like ordering DVDs online from America, waiting for them to arrive, like. Three months later, again, they used to do a, like a deal of like five for twenty-five dollars, and like just putting that thing in and watching it, man, it was like, uh, it was like a cynical late teens, early twenties version of my childhood again. Yeah, and uh, I'm I'm about to do a big rewatch because I just love that wrestling so much, and also it created a lot of today's stars yes. as well. So that's a cool facet of it too. Feds are number one for me, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> yeah. It's me. Like, I, I, I get it, it, it's subjective, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not saying, well, clearly WWE's the best and always been the best and the, always at the peak is the best. Uh, I wouldn't be a wrestling fan. I wouldn't be doing this amazing job that I have without uh, WWE. Um, yes, I may have dropped off over the years. I think every fan who's not named Michael Hamlet has done. Yes. Uh, or discovered, like you said, uh, different promotions. But I just, when WWE's at its best, you know, um, uh, for me, there's nothing quite like it. Uh, and I know it may not necessarily be the, the best in ring or whatever, but I just think in terms of aura and, you know, being lucky enough to go to so many WrestleManias, I, I look forward to it every year. And yeah, my brain now works in, well, Monday is, is Raw day, yeah. Friday is SmackDown day. Yeah. And it has done for many, many years, although SmackDown obviously has moved around. Um, and I just, it's just the best. There I love it. But again, completely subjective. Let us know your yeah, peaks in the comments. Don't fight us. Don't fight no. us. Uh, let us know your list. Yeah, it'll be interesting to read uh, down there. Is it my turn? Uh, penultimate yeah. question, yeah. yeah. It's Tom Talks Rubbish. Hey. He's been on. Hello, Tom. Hi, Tom. Uh, as content creators uh, who cover wrestling, do you, did you ever consider going to wrestling training <laughs> to get an understanding of wrestling better? Thank you for being amazing. Thank you for being amazing Thanks, too. Tom. Check out uh, Tom's YouTube channel. Uh, uh, interesting question. Have you ever thought about getting into ring? <laughs> nope. Uh, <laughs> I've barely got in the ring. Oh, I should have mentioned WCBW was sort of 1A to, to yeah. uh, WWE being 1, obviously, on the Wrestling Peaks lift. Obviously. Um, I barely got in the ring when we had one built for WCPW. I've never taken a bump in my life. I think the closest I've come is a gimmicked pool cue being broken over my back by Phil Chambers that I moaned about for a month afterwards for some video that we were doing. Yeah, yeah I, I, I'd, I'd, I'd happily go in a ring and like take a bump to see what it felt like, but I've never had the desire. I've had the desire to be a world champion uh, yeah. and and play that on computer games or imagine myself beating someone in the main event of WrestleMania. Never wanted to take a bump, thank you very much. Yeah. All, all credit to Simon Miller, because he could have just kept doing what he was doing, but look at him now, fair play to him. Yeah, the, I think um, my answer might surprise people because despite this incredibly muscular, mm -hmm. intimidating and gorgeous physique. We hide ours well, don't we? We, we really do. Uh, under my, well, in my case, under about 50 pounds of fat. Uh, <laughs> I have never, really wanted to do it for a number of reasons. Number one is I'm very soft. Mm. <laughs> like, I don't want to take bumps. I, I would maybe like to do like one bump at one point, yes. right? Just to understand what hitting the mat back first hard feels like. I think that that would, you know, change your perspective a lot. But number one, I am too soft. Uh, number two, I'm not disciplined enough to do it justice. Uh, and number three, um, I respect I would be bad at it, right? Respect and I, the business. I respect the business. I respect the people who go through this every single day on the road, blah, blah, yeah. blah, like taking hits, all that stuff. My 
pounding up. I respect what they've put in and what they've sacrificed physically and mentally to be where they are for me to go in and make a hatchet job of yeah. it. Um, I would be completely useless. I would be the worst wrestler you've ever seen, uh, which actually might be worth a couple of quid to somebody. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, I think it is an interesting question and yeah. I think that uh, something like taking a bump would probably be like, oh yeah, okay, I get it. Yeah, don't get me wrong. <laughs> whenever we used to do like stunner parties in WCBW, I would love to be a part of that, but... Um... Yeah, I just thought I was going to screw it up, to be very honest. <laughs> um, so, yeah, no, it, it's not for me, this. Uh, I just will, will enjoy watching it. That being said, of course, uh, still offer still stands for Chris Cyborg, if she ever wants to actually respond. It keeps ducking me. Yeah, she terrifies. Mm, she is indeed. Good luck. Uh, right, final question comes from the arse, formerly known as Jimmy Blades. The Bulldogs had Matilda, Andy Ooh. Murray. Coco had Frankie, Jake had Damien. But what current wrestler should have an animal sidekick and what should it be? Uh, you can name it if you want. One male, female, WWE, AEW. Uh, for the purposes of this query, they are used to pyro and they won't poop at loud noises. Okay, that's an important distinction mm. for sure. Uh, so I've, I've gone for two, right? Neither of them are in AEW or WWE at the moment, but I've think this fits the indie wrestler eel o'neill team it up with the eel baby why the hell not let's do it it makes perfect sense yeah uh number two is i have a theory i have a theory are you familiar with game of thrones i am indeed you're familiar with the concept of warging mm -hmm. like going into the body of an animal and looking through its eyes uh, nicholas oh there you go, there you go. um <laughs> My theory is that, you know, the brawl out, the backstage fight, all of that stuff. In that moment, when Larry was being picked up by uh, Kenny Omega, okay. a steel warged into Larry's body <laughs> and, and bit, arr, beat Ken, bit Kenny Omega in the arm. He's never come out. He's never come right. out. A Steel is still inside Larry <laughs> and Larry is now inside A Steel. So what I would do is team the two of them up so that they can both be whole again. I like that. I like that a lot. I don't think I can top those. Uh, I this guy? I went a different... Wait, I haven't booked yeah. the eel, unfortunately. Okay. Sorry, mate. Um, I picked some varying different ones. Some animals, some uh, fancy creatures, to be perfectly honest. The Bloodline is a great story, isn't it? Uh, it's my favourite uh, story in all of wrestling, but it's been going on a bit. So from the never-ending story, they get Falcor <laughs> uh, to fly to the ring on. Cheesy <laughs> peeps. Um... I've just written here, <laughs> as you can see, Zazu assisting a ge general manager. <laughs> Wise cracking. Okay. You okay. know, like uh, Postman Pitt like tearing his hair at and Zazu's like, I'll probably go and do all this. Uh, a genuine answer. When's this video going out? Friday. Okay, uh, good. That's good. Friday so it's ahead of full gear. Uh, an actual shoot prediction. I think Carl Fletcher is going to win against Will Ospreay with the help of a kangaroo. Obviously. Have you seen them? They're jacked. They put like dogs in headlocks and stuff. They can box. Yeah. I think I think Will Ospreay is going to be setting up for the hidden blade. Bop in the back of the head <laughs> from a kangaroo. Job done. Why not? Um, and then the other two, again, I've gone back to uh, uh, the previous. Um, I've written Salem from Sabrina question mark. <laughs> what? I feel like he's you know he's a good promo. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he's sort of always a bit down on his luck. Salem from Sabrina, the teenage witch, yeah. is a good promo. And the bloke, the, sorry, the voice of Salem was on like Wrestling's Greatest Secrets, wasn't it? Because he was like, it's a stunt granny. There you go. So he's got history there. Okay. Uh, and also possibly circling back to our um, who's going to be world champion next. If Don Mysterio is going to do it. He needs a heater for me. Uh. He needs someone, he's a little weaselly twat, and uh, how's he gonna get away with it? Well, he gets help from the animal in his corner. I think it's an animal. I don't know. Chewbacca. Uh, it's a Wookiee, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Imagine you, that. You do a good and Chewbacca. Then, but, but picture the split eventually when he's like, you bloody idiot, Chewbacca, and <laughs> Sorry, Jimmy Blade. I don't know how you beat that. No. <laughs> Goodness uh, gracious me. What about... Brock Lesnar five minutes into a match and Barney the Dinosaur. I feel like the aesthetic <laughs> would be on point. <laughs> Jeez, who can we pair? Children's with? TV characters with wrestlers. That is something for next one. week. That's a good one. Who could we pair Mudang with? Oh, <laughs> God damn, I love Mudang. <laughs> Little hippo coming, um, up, coming off the top rope. Um, right oh, Ace Steel, there we hey, go. Yes, it's a trio. <laughs> We've got a trio. Larry, Mudang, Ace Steel. <laughs> my, my Thanks God. for all your questions. Uh, here's another video. You're going to like it. It's, it's a good one. Bye. Bye. <laughs>